Hello, in this video we're going to look at comparing numbers in JavaScript. If you've done programming before in some other language, you can skip this video because there are no surprises in this particular one. This is stuff that is the same in many different programming languages. Uh, so let's start off with use strict here because I want to force myself to declare variables. Now we can write console.log and we could compare, for example, 7 with 7. Supposing we want to know if 7 is equal to 7, which it clearly is, we can write 7 equals equals 7. Now uh, this equals equals here is the equality test operator. It t it's un unlike the single equals sign, which is used to assign values to variables, the double equals sign is the equality test operator. It's used to check if two values are equal or not, and it returns either true or false. I say returns, meaning um, this whole expression here will evaluate as a whole to either true or false. Let's run this. So um, what did I call that? I called it comparing numbers. So if I run uh, node comparing numbers.js, it says true. Now this is a bit useless because we know that 7 is equal to 7, but I could have one of these values stored in a variable. Like, let's write let um, value, or let's write, let's call it days in week equals 7. And notice um, the way I write this variable here is called camel casing. So I've written the first letter lowercase and then each subsequent word that it's made up of, I write with an uppercase first letter for readability. This is called camel casing, and it's a very common convention in JavaScript, so it's what I'm going to be using here. It's important to stick to consistent coding conventions. Now, so I can compare days in week here with 7. Is it equal to 7? And that's going to be, of course, true true. Whereas if I asked is it equal to 6 or something, then it's going to be false. And this might not seem like much, but uh, this is sort of a key part of programming really, comparing values like this. This might be something you've got from user input, or it's something you calculated at enormous length, and then you want to check is it equal to something else. In JavaScript there's also a symbol with three equal signs like this, uh, which at first glance seems to do the same sort of thing. And we're going to be looking at that um, a, video to, a video video or two down the line. Uh, for the moment, we'll just look at equals equals. Now let's just copy this and um, I'll, cr I'll add like a sort of um, a bit of text here so that we can because I'm going to have lots of these, and uh, I want to keep track of which one's which. Okay, so there's um, equals equals. There's also less than or greater than. So we could write days in week less than eight, for example. That will be true. Let's try this. True. And there's also greater than, so days in week greater than eight. So of course this, this is the bit that's being actually evaluated uh, and turned into either true or false. This is just some text that I've just put there as a description. So is days in week greater than eight? No, it's not because days in week is seven. So if we run this now, we should get false and we do false. Uh, there's you can use less than and greater than with floating point numbers like 8.3, for example. If you want, you know, you want to compare two numbers with decimal points in them, you can compare them with greater than or uh, less than. You can't do it so successfully with equals equals. It should be avoided. Don't try to compare floating point numbers or decimals or fractions, whatever you want to call them, with equals equals because um, they can't be stored in a precise way in a computer's memory. So um, two floating point numbers that seem to be equal, you know, they could differ by some tiny, tiny amount. 
and they won't be equal at all. Or, you know, something weird could happen, basically. Just avoid comparing floating point numbers with equality test operators in most programming languages in general. It's, it's not a good thing to do. Um, but all of these work fine with integers, and it's common to use these two with floating point integers. Notice with the less than and greater than operators, they return true if the thing at the smaller end of them, if you think of them as having a small end and a large end, these actual operators, uh, it's when the thing at the smaller end is smaller than the thing at the larger end that they return true. So days and week, is that smaller than eight, which is at the larger end? Yes, so that's true. Here we've got another operator, it's greater than. Days and week is at the bigger end of the operator, so to speak. Is that bigger, therefore, than eight, which is at the smaller end? No, it's not. So this is going to evaluate to false. After a while, it sort of becomes second nature um, to, to recognize uh, these less than and greater than. So we've also got um, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. Let's copy these and change them to less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Uh, so these, this will, this will taking this one for a start, less than or equal to, this is going to return true if... Um, if days in week is either less than or equal to eight. Let's maybe put seven here. So if we ask firstly, is it is it is days in week less than seven? That's false. It's not it's not less than seven because it, it's equal to seven. But if I write is days in week less than or equal to seven, less than or equal to seven, that's now true. Days in week is less than or equal to seven because it happens to be equal to seven. So if I run this now, I should change the text as well here. This is now true. And uh, greater than or equal to, of course, works in the same sort of way. I'll just leave this as it is. Uh, is days in week greater than or equal to eight? False. It's not greater than eight and also it's not equal to eight. And that's why that gives me false. There we go, false. Okay, um, so that those are all the most important uh, comparison operators for numbers. We've also got this one, the identity test operator, which we're going to talk about later. But, you know, in general, you can basically use that instead of equals equals, um, wherever you feel like it. With numbers here, it's just going to do the same thing. Oh, yeah, there's also not equal, which I should mention. So if I copy these, we've got not equal looks like this and we've also got a version of it with just another equals sign in which for our purposes here does the exact same thing so um, is days in week not equal to six that's true it's it, it's not equal to six so if we run this we find yes it's true that it's not equal to six and this longer version does the same thing here. We'll talk about that later. So um, if you're a beginner, and you probably are if you actually watch this video, um, then you want to just practice these. Uh, try them all out for yourself. Just try them all out. Don't worry about making notes, but try them uh, for yourself. And you probably want to make sure that you can remember what they're called, I suppose. So this is equality test. This is actually identity test, which we'll look at later. Um, this is the not equal operator. This is uh, not identical. And we've got less than. What's this one? Greater than. 
less than or equal to uh, greater than or equal to. Okay, um, try them all out and uh, we'll move on to look at comparing strings. When we finish going through these comparison operators, which won't take us much longer, then we will go on to actually practically using them and looking at some more of the building blocks of programming. So until next time, happy coding.